Good morning and welcome to Daily Devotions with Pastor Joe. I'm Pastor Joe and right at the beginning of this video I'd like to encourage you to like, comment, and subscribe and share this video with a friend. If you have anybody you know who would like to have this kind of content filtering into their YouTube box every morning. Uh, Psalm of David, chapter 16, Psalm number 16, Mictam of David. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. And there's no other place to put our trust but in the Lord, but in God Almighty. O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, thou art my Lord. That means thou hast said unto the Lord God of the universe, uh, Jehovah is the word, Yehovah. Uh, thou art my Lord, my Adonai. My goodness extendeth not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent, in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. The Lord is the portion of mine inheritance and of my cup. Uh, thou maintainest my lot. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places, yea, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who hath given me counsel. My reins also instruct me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures ever forevermore. In a very lofty and beautiful poem of David this is, as, I, as said in Mictam of David, not a, not a psalm as in a song. It was not meant to be put to music necessarily. It was a, a, uh, a poem, <coughs> a poem written to the Lord by David, asking God for preservation, confirming his trust in the Lord, saying to the Lord that um, the, that phrase, my goodness extendeth not to thee, according to Adam Clark and the others I tried to look to, they basically said there's a lot of ways you could, you could, you could read that and um, translate it, and so it's very difficult, but... Basically this, that you don't have any need of, of me. You know, you found pleasure in me, though you don't need me, though I'm nothing special. Or in other words, it's looking right back to that whole uh, works thing. We don't need, our works are nothing. Our works don't merit our salvation. They don't merit God's favor. Uh, God favors us whether we do the work or not. But then uh, the, the work comes out from the other side of that, of that grace that God gives. But to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent in whom is all my delight. I would almost consider this to say that, you know, God, you don't need my, my help, but the, the other people in the earth that I, that I delight in, they need my help. But it goes on, their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Talking about the people of the world who hasten after, go after, chase after, follow after any other uh, gods of this life. So what is your life focused around? Is it focused around the Lord of the universe, uh, Jehovah, the great and mighty God who created all things? Or is it following after one of these lesser things of life? Um, and if so, you need to get your priorities straight. David here says their drink offerings, or in other words, the things that they offer of blood, their blood, blood sacrifices, I will not offer because they're tainted, they're evil. The, whatever good the things of this life have are not good enough to be given to God. Uh, and so if you're following after some other God and saying, well, I'm, I'm spending, you know, I might be working seven days a week, and no, I'm not really taking time for a Sabbath, but I'm, I'm sending my tithe to the church. Well, that's, that's nice. It, it helps the church, but that's, that's not going to please God. It's not going to please God to give the, the sacrifice rather than the obedience. We, we know that to be true. He would prefer obedience over sacrifice. Nor take up their names into my lips. I won't even speak about the other gods of this world, he says. They're not even worthy of being, uh, of being mentioned. The Lord is, my por is the portion of mine inheritance, my cup, uh, and of my cup thou maintainest my lot. So God maintains me. Without God I am nothing. God maintains me. He is my inheritance. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. And hasn't that been true for every one of us? Hasn't God maintained each and every one of us and given us uh, goodly things to, to uh, thank him for? Hasn't he given us good reason to be thankful, if nothing else, to be thankful for, uh, for the very fact that he created us and gave us 
the opportunity to make the choice of, uh, of serving him, and, and he's given us the chance to serve him. He sent his son for every person whosoever will uh, to, to be saved, and we can thank him for that. We can thank him for so many things, the lines of life, the things that have happened, They've fallen into pleasant places, even if we've suffered here and there. We know David suffered quite a bit of anguish and, and, and a lot of trouble during his time, yet he still said God has uh, given him a goodly heritage and, and, and things are pleasant for him because he has the Lord. And then he says, I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel, counsel, wisdom, advice on how to live. My reigns also instruct me in the night seasons. I, I'm reigning my life, I suppose you would say. My reigns are going to instruct me or keep me in the nighttime. I've set the Lord always before me, and you should. If anything else is in front of you or before you, it's, it's not going to satisfy or help you the way that God is. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. You know, And, and that's the thing in the Christian life. If we want to know how to not be moved... It's to keep God close to us, to always have God always before us, always before our minds. And because he's at our right hand, we shall not be moved. Just the other day, I was working on a paper here, and I'm, I might talk about it later, talking about different passages of the Bible. First Corinthians 13, people have talked about uh, personalizing it, saying instead of uh, charity, um, let's see. Charity is, is long-suffering and patient and slow to anger and, and those other things. Instead of saying that, say, I am. And then say, now, am I? <laughs> am I really that way? And so right up here I've got basically those things from 1 Corinthians 13, Ephesians 6.10 through 18, Philippians 4, um, and 2 Peter 1, where it's got different passages of things that God expects of us and, and of the way we ought to live. And, and I've put in there... You know, basically, am I living up to these standards? So I can look at them and say, well, Lord, I, I want to do a, a self-check this morning with you and see how I'm standing. Um, I will bless the Lord. You know, he's always before me, verse 8, because he's at my right hand, I shall not be moved, because he is right there beside me, taking care of me and using me uh, for his glory. I know that he's going to keep me. Uh, he's not going to let me go. If, if you trust in God enough to save you, then you should be able to trust in God enough to keep you and to keep you from being moved or, or from backsliding or from losing out. If you are willing and really wanting and really committed to him, you will not be moved. Therefore my, my heart is glad, verse 9, and my glory rejoiceth, my flesh also shall rest in hope. Why? Because I have God at my right hand and I'm not going to be moved. Even my flesh will rest in hope. Hope of salvation. Hope of the resurrection. They knew it was coming someday because of Christ coming, but they didn't know when, but they had hope. The, and uh, you will not leave my soul in hell. That term hell here is not what you would normally think, what we normally say of it. It is Hades, the world of the dead, including uh, basically the grave, and the pit. And so that word, while it's translated as hell, means it, you won't leave me in the pit. You won't leave me in the grave. You're going. This is very much between verses nine and ten, talking about the resurrection uh, at the end of time. Uh, Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Yeah, once again, talking about Jesus here, the holy one. That's why King James Bibles capitalize it because they believe it's talking about the Christ. Uh, see corruption. All humans see corruption because born in sin liable to the curse, the human body of Jesus Christ as being without sin, saw no corruption. Oh, John Wesley, to be corrupted, putrefied in the grave as the bodies of others are. Or in other words, you're not going to let your holy son rot in the grave. You're going to bring him back out. Uh, and so I think that that might even be a little more what this is saying, that it's not, you, it's a it's a prophecy saying that Christ wouldn't stay in the grave long enough for his body to rot. Uh, verse 11, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Fullness of joy. So if God is at our right hand, if God is with us, if you're really saved, uh, at least as good as David was, and, and at least as good as what we should be, saved from sins, that means that you've confessed your sins to Christ, forsaken them, repented of them, forsaken them, and believed on him for salvation, then 
then you should be at a point where God is dwelling with you. And if God is with you, you shall not be moved as long as you keep him before you and keep him in the forefront of your mind. Consider him every time a temptation comes your way. Consider but the Lord. The Lord is more important. Um, he's at my right hand. I won't be moved. My soul, you're, you're going to rejoice in him. Your heart's going to be glad and you're going to have fullness of joy in his presence. Will there come times where you feel cloudy, where you feel sad or low? I'm, I'm not going to say there won't be because I've had a few of them myself, but in, in all of those, you can still take the time to say, but I'm going to be happy in the Lord. And believe me, there have been times when even I've, I've gotten up to preach, and I've just been feeling so glummy, and so like, oh, I just don't feel like I'm that, like I'm, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not feeling saved, the feeling of salvation, but it's not about the feeling. It's about the action, the, the, the actuality of, of salvation. And so in God's presence, then in those moments, I've said, Lord, you've brought me here. You've called me to this place. I've got nothing that I've done wrong that it can come to my mind. I've got no guilt. My conscience is clear before you and before my fellow man. And I'm just going to trust you. And I'll tell you, in those moments, those are times where I've felt the fullness of the joy of God come into my life in those moments and just say, all right, let's, let's get this done. Let's do what God wants us to do and move on. And so, can you, like David, call out to God for preservation and trust him for that? Trust, put your trust in him, because if you do, you will rest in hope. You will not be moved. You will keep God set before your eyes. You will not uh, pay any attention or care to the gods of this life and the gods of this earth that they serve. And you will be filled in his presence with the fullness of his joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures evermore. So, live for the Lord today. Live for nothing else but the Lord. Care about him. Focus on him. Trust in him. Trust in him for preservation and to keep you from evil. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button. Comment down below any com comments or, or discussion you want to give. Uh, and just share this video with friends if you have any friends that would be interested in talking about the Bible. And have a great day in the Lord. God bless. I'll see you tomorrow on another Daily Devotions with Pastor Joe.